I might end up doing little workshops on the perm on building and on running a museum and, and, and you know. But if you see what I mean, it's that's the key to us surviving, it's a massive key. We need as many of these things as possible. Yeah. Difficult, no problem unless you get it airtight. The advantage of metal is you can do nice airtight welds. In theory clay you can get it there because a little pinprick hole, you get a jet of yellow smoke billowing out of there. It's interesting, you put a lighter to it, you get a little jet of fire, but you don't want leaks because the fumes are toxic. And you want it going through the fire. You're aiming for clean, you're aiming for smoke free. I've never tried it with clay, probably quite possible, yeah. Um, the, 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 that doesn't need to be airtight, you want leaks in there because that's where you want the smoke to go. But the outer cylinder has to seal, so if you can get clay to seal, no problem. I don't know. I don't know clay. I'm a I'm a fire and metal person. I'm, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, biochar. Briefly, that's what I'm after. Um, this sandy soil, wet climate. Guy wanders into my field saying, oh, "I want to set a little bakery up," and I say, "Brilliant. I will give you your ovens. I will give you a shed. I will give you. You produce biochar for me. It's worth it." Suddenly. Um, it, it's a valuable commodity. At the moment, burning charcoal for biochar is wrong. There's a lot of people starting to do this. It's too wasteful. I want a system of producing biochar intelligently capturing the heat. Um, you can buy it in bags. It's the same price as normal charcoal. Normal conventional char too wasteful. It's not there. It's not going to make it sustainable. Once you start shipping it up and down in bags, even, even further from it. Oop, no. um, if you put charcoal, if you put wood chip on your land, in your manure pile, it will in two or three years time rot down and release all the carbon in the sky. Terra Preta, American Indians, Amazon Basin 8,000 years ago, were, we don't know, they've left what we call Terra Preta, we don't know what it is, how it was made. All we know is it's charcoal rich, it's made with charcoal, very, very nutrient rich. It was either their composting toilets or they were making soil fertile for, for their future generation. They were wiped out by the Spaniards. Um, the two things that have inspired us about Terra Preta are, oh, he's got a wet. Veronica, if he's got a wet ankle, does that mean his nappy one's changing? No, has he been shredding in puddles? Good. <laughs> I'm not very, I don't do kids. <laughs> you can't, you, you know, you need eccentric uncles, but you can't have nutty inventions and kids and welders in your living room. And, um, anyway, two things about Terra Preta. People are now looking at this ancient American Indian, you know, shame we wiped him out. The carbon is all there. The charcoal, the, you put charcoal in your land, 8,000 years later, that carbon is permanently sequestered, not released at the back. IPCC, where the International Panel on Climate Change, they reckon 350 parts per million carbon in the atmosphere. Just, I don't like statistics, I used to be a statistician, but just a couple of basic ones. 350 parts per million, that's when we went past the tipping point for us surviving or not, for, for irreversible climate change. We went past there in 1983. We're on, I don't know, 390. We, if we, another 90 gigatons of carbon chucked in the soil, we're back to being able to survive. Uh, not anthropomorphic, irreversible climate change is what we're talking about. I can't think, I've never come across any other way of doing it that's, that's, that will work. Um, small scale cook stoves across Africa is, that's what Paul Anderson's really triggered. I'm saying, why don't we do it in the West? Why don't we clean up our own mess? Yeah. Um, you know, great getting them bringing back their deserts at the same time and being able to bring up the, why don't we clean up our own mess? Yep, big one, yeah. Um, so over there, the big, big bag, very big surface area, a lot of micropores, you've forced all the wood gases out, big, big surface area, little electrical charge, nutrients attracted to the, it's why it's used in filters, and it's why it's used in, com best stuff for compost loose, because uh, it's the same reasons, y you are capturing the soluble nutrients, and they know, so the terra preta, carbon is all there, very nutrient rich 8,000 years later. High in nitrogen, high in potassium, high in phosphorus, it's all there. It's not washed out in, an, in the rainforest, it's not washed out. Manure. Put it on the land and put it in the compost. Put it in the compost, you can't spread it on your land right. because you suck the nutrients out of your soil. So you can't, that's when it gets a bad name. Uh, it is not, you have to fully charge it with nutrients before you use it.
that's one key. Then you think, right, if it's not washing out in the rain or leaching out into the atmosphere, these nutrients, which is what happens, a couple of statistics, one tonne of soluble nitrates, 12 tonnes of oil to produce it, two rainfalls, and these little yellow tablets you see across fields, that is a serious environmental problem. The, all the blue-green algae taken up, we are burning tonnes of oil to create a serious environmental problem. Uh, but farmers are almost without this, they, they're in a corner because consumers expect bright green, super fluorescent carrot, you know, vegetables, whatever. It's, you know, you expect this artificial, almost unnatural nowadays. You won't buy it if it's, it's just not there for the supermarket system. They're almost forced to do it. Their, their grandfathers must be turning in their graves. We've always done it fine until now. Why can't we do it now? Very hard where I am because there's the soil. And, um, some soils less appropriate in, you know, heavy nutrient rich soils less important, but where I am, sandy soils, high rainfall. So, yeah, you're, um, the key for making these nutrients available to your plants, if they're not going to wash out in the rain, they're not going to the sky, what makes them available to your plants? Biological activity. Without that, it's locked in, it's not available to your plants. This is another reason biochar, so George Monbiot, I wish he was here, I'd love to hammer his article, he's written an article, Daily Mail Standard, below Daily Mail Standard, slamming biochar. He's never, you know, he's not an organic grower, he doesn't know. He's just copied another article on Biofuel Watch, which Biofuel Watch guys, I used to, I used to work for a small-scale biodiesel industry, they won't distinguish between small-scale recycling oil and big-scale importing palm oil. It's like saying, my little organic holding is on par with Monsanto. You can't. You know what I mean? They're wrong. You don't wipe out the baby with the bathwater. We need small-scale biofuels. We need small-scale biochar. We need small agricultural units. We can't. You can't write them all off as the same thing. You can't write off all biofuels. We need. We need to burn wood if we're coming off oil. We need intelligent. Most biofuels, yes. Cutting down rainforest in order to produce biochar. Don't, you know that's what they're doing now. Biochar is getting a bad name because once it's in the hands of Monsanto getting their carbon credits, it's wrong. Intelli I'm just on about all I'm concerned with is intelligent use that is there. I'm not interested in any of that crap. Good question. I'm going, nobody's worked it out. The figures that you're given officially, and again, somebody's making these up, one ton to, per acre before any of the magic starts, 50 tons per acre and the magic stops. But I think it's not that simple. It depends so much on your soil but I'm doing 50-50 and then I'm encouraging biological activity so my compost piles are 50-50 horse manure charcoal I suspect it's meant to be 30% charcoal 70% manure I don't know I'm doing 50-50 I'm doing little controls and ways of getting biological activity you can buy there's a 450 year million million year symbiotic relationship between plant roots and um, the mycelium for fungi, the right bacteria, it's been going on for 450 million years. These bacteria will leave the roots, go and bring in nutrients, bring them back to the roots from distance, to, and in exchange for nutrients, they take carbon dioxide and oxygen. The plants will give up carbon dioxide to these mycelium and you name it. And uh, I don't know, that's not... Um, it happens naturally, encourage it. You can buy kits, you can buy inoculators, what I'm doing is, so two manure piles in my polytunnel at the moment. One is covered in lagoons, one is not because I want to control. They're in the polytunnel so I'm controlling the amount of water they get, enough to keep. And the way I'm seeing it is if you've got, so registered organic, you have to have cover over your manure pile because when you see that black liquid running off, that's what I'm trying to capture with the biochar. You don't want black liquid runoff. You're causing a pollution problem with your, um, and with what you, you know, that's your liquid gold, that's what you need, is that yeah. black liquid. Um, so yeah, um, I, and my intention is the legumes and other crops growing on my manure pile, which I'll just dig back into the manure in a year's time, not to add bulk as a green manure is normally done, but to trigger off biological activity in the biochar mix. I'm doing it 50, uh, 50 like I said, the big surface area in charcoal and the electrical charge means once you've triggered that biological activity, you have a perfect habitat. So if you're triggering biological activity in normal soil, you don't have a consistent long-term habitat. So the, I'd rather see biochar 
and I'm new, you know, I've not got results from what I'm doing, I've not been doing it long enough. But my view in my head is I'm creating a habitat for biological mechanisms, uh, bio uh, your microbes and your fungi and your mycelium and you name it, the beneficial ones. That's what it is, it's a store for nutrients and it's a habitat for making these nutrients available. Um, other ways of doing it, I've just simply been mixing it in small piles across rolling out black plastic for a year, just leaving small piles of manure charcoal mix, peel the plastic off in a year and just plant straight up to these piles because I'm figuring if they're small piles there's enough activity co coming from the soil. If you're interested in actually generating fermentations, there's one called Bokashi, which just google it, basically creating a fermentation, a bit like making wine or sourdough bread, you're getting natural but from your soil and then you ferment using molasses and wheat germ and all these things and then you get this whole fermentation going in your compost heap using natural yeast and fungi from your soil and then you add it and your manure pile very very quickly hits 80 degrees C so you've got to really stir it to cool it down um, key to, you know, Vokash is a good one to go Google but that's, I'm saying this briefly, don't go, you know, go, go back, to, if, you're a, if you're a grower on any scale this is, you know, do it, start becoming carbon negative, actually get intelligent heating systems in your dwellings and, um, and you know, but play, don't go making your soil sterile for the next three years simply by tipping charcoal on there and sucking all the nutrients out because it will take three years of doing that before your soil recovers. At least, I mean, up to 50 years in some circumstances if there's no biological activity going on. And that is the opposite. Another little point, conventional farming... Um, it's soluble nitrates, soluble fertilizers, no biological activity, human health, you know, it just doesn't correlate. You want minerals being available to those plants. If you've killed off all the biological activity in your soil and you've replaced it with soluble nutrients and there's no, no, no actual life in the soil, what is making those minerals available to the plant? That, that 450 million year old symbiotic relationship you've wiped out in order to clean, you know, the hydroponic growing, none of, no, it's not there. Human health, you want minerals in your plants. <laughs> yeah. hey, um, I was just wondering, when you, uh, when you put the, the biochar on your compost, um, are you looking to crush it in any way beforehand? Coming out of this, I, I tend not to because I'm making biochar. These different, basic difference, these you can make biochar out of logs. These, biochar out of wood chip. But bark's brilliant, forestry bark, I've tried it, you get a maddest flame, you can't believe, real intense heat coming off bark. Um, smaller, smaller waste matter. No, I ju I'm just chucking it in, but that's because it's small enough particles. But if you're making it from big logs, yes. And the way to crush it, I suspect, is I've got working horses, just ponies, just to do the weeding, because it's more intelligent than using a tractor. You know, tractor for the muck spreading, but... Um, horse stable, there's capturing all the horse shit in the horse piss and crushing it. But otherwise, you know, because you don't want to breathe in the dust if you're going to crush it. And you don't want to be releasing dust, carbon, as dust into the atmosphere. You want, you know, there's different ways of crushing it, yeah, and, and there, there is optimum sizes and ideally crushed. But, but I suspect once it's in there and once it's saturated with nutrients, I'd, there's lots of scientists working on this one, I don't think it makes much of a difference. Once it's established, I think all these experiments are in the first two years, and I bet after four years there's no difference, however your charcoal's made, all these, you know, different, and, you know, I don't think it's that big a difference long term. Probably it makes a difference short term. But, yeah. How long does it get to compost? I leave it for. I'm leaving it for a year. It depends on the level of biological activity. Compost loose, brilliant. That's what you want. You really want charcoal, not wood chip. You know, because then you get. You, it encourages the. It, you're capturing all the nitrogen from the urine going in there, and you're. Um, it's encouraging the aerobic activity because you've got such a big surface area and it just sees off the anaerobic activity which is what you don't want if you don't want cholera if you, want it, you name it and that's probably why the Amazon Indians had a massive massive population in such an inhospitable environment very efficient composting systems biochar that's probably what it was but yeah so anything that encourages the growth I'd say probably six months I bet the ones in my polytunnel will be super good in six months but if you're leaving it just in piles depends on the ratio play with it the kind of stuff you're saying is pretty inspiring. Would yeah. you um, recommend people that have just got a little compost at home to go ahead and try and experimenting with biochar stuff and try chucking it in with the compost just yeah, as an yeah, early Yeah, little, little council composters. And if you don't, I mean, I'm on about capturing very efficient heat capture, but for just starting to play, if you've got a wood burner or an open fire, get an ammunition box, knock a few holes in it. I've read this one, but I've never done it. 
So I could fill it full of wood, the smoke will go out the holes and give you extra heat in your fire, and you'll have a box full of charcoal at the end of the day. So, a simple way to get, make, create charcoal if you just live in a house and you haven't, or if you're renting a house, it's very hard to convert to a sensible system. You have to keep a stupid system in place. Um, so, but yeah, you know, there's always room to play on these things. Um, yeah, play, do, Please. and uh, mix it layers of your compost going in with um, uh, with, with your uh, with your biochar. I mean, I've, uh, by my I've a little wooden chalet, what goes into the polyton or what goes into the field, and just outside my door, just for the vegetable waste. Yes, I'm using one of those little cat, little green composters, and I'm, it's a layer of charcoal, a layer of you know, alternating layers.